Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And before I get into the show, I need to do a public announcement, a service announcement for The Thunder Show. We are limited with our rubber wrestlers, Matt, don't you think? I mean, I love the Sheik and Nikolai Volkov, greatest tag team of all time. Russia, number one. I just, America, I just, that's the best ever. Piper, we got a Hogan and Hillbilly Jim, a couple of things, but I need the Vayner Nation to come through. Please, 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 send in some rubber wrestlers so I can put them on the show. It worked with the Thundercats, we got a whole bunch. I can really, really use your help. So please, if you care about the Thunder Show, Please send in some rubber wrestlers. We need some because they're just so fun and they're tremendous props for the show. So if you're interested in helping us out, I'm going to have you, Mott, put in your email. They can get the address from you. Link it up, Mott, right off the bat on today's Thunder Show. And today's show is all about Zinfandel. The last wine actually is 77% Zinfandel, but we've got three Zinfandel-based wines, two Zinfandels and one little blend, but Ridge is so popular and we always have to have it. Um, I'm very excited about Zinfandel. Um, it's a great varietal. It's a wine that gets me excited. I go through really interesting patterns of getting into Zinfandel and I feel like another wave of Zinfandel love hitting me. And so we've got three interesting wines here today. I'm excited about trying them and uh, we're going to do that in a minute. But first we're going to do a little Casey Kaysen because that's what we do on the show. Big birthday shout out to Jonathan Woolsey. Uh, happy birthday to you, my man. Uh, big, big birthday, new Vaniac. That's pretty cool. And one of my Twitter friends, Ozzy Beef. O-Z-Z-Y, beef on Twitter. Big happy birthday to you. And speaking of Twitter, if you're not following me like the 6,700 other people, there's just a link up right over here. Friend me up, right over here. I know you're on an iPod right now and say, God darn, Gary does that all the time. But it's over there, please follow me. A lot of cool things because of Twitter. A lot of cool things, had a great, great weekend. Um, got to see my fams, which is always nice. Uh, got a little work done, but I'm pretty behind on email, so I apologize, I'm really behind on email. Uh, I just want to make that shout out. So if you uh, need me, please write urgent, urgent, urgent on the email. And let's start with the Trace Sabros, uh, 2004, Zinfandel from Rutherford, 90 points Robert Parker, 24 US dollars. Nice little bottle. I like the package. Ma, what do you think? You like the bottle? Kind of cool. Yeah, I like the shirt. Yeah, totally different. How's your weekend, Ma? Good? Good. NFL Draft this weekend. I will be there. Please watch ESPN as I've made an appearance three years in a row. And... Uh, you know, you've seen the videos and hopefully uh, you'll see me again. I will work my magic to try to figure out how to get on the camera. The camera finds me, my, I don't know what it is, or maybe I find the camera. The camera a little sniffy sniff time, indeed. Interesting color before I get into it. A little cloudy, almost not brownish, but cranberry-esque, kind of neat. A little, little different. Um, let's see what's going on here on the sniffy sniff. Very big nose, beautiful. Uh, chocolate covered cherries on the nose right off the bat. If you ever, I used to really dislike chocolate covered cherries, so I'd smash them a lot, which would then aromatically explode when you crush it. And so this is like crushed chocolate covered cherries on the nose. I also get some strawberry fruit roll ups coming through. Remember the fruit roll ups? Before they jumped the shark and made shapes, when it was just pure good old fashioned fruit roll ups, mid 80s came out strong. Was really into those. Get a little bit of that. Little hint of pepper. Little, little subtle hint of white pepper on the nose. Maybe a dash of, uh... no, I'm gonna stick with that. Let's give it a whirl. Little beef jerky. Yeah, a little beef jerky kind of thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. Good mouthfeel. Good, very solid, dark, complex fruit. Little high in alcohol, 15.0. I'm gonna guess it's even a little higher. They don't like paying the taxes. Um, very ripe, very explosive, very dark. Um, you know, black chocolate high cocoa count, not your milk chocolate, it's your dark chocolate component. The heat is getting through a little bit on the tail end, a little more than I would like. Um, very interesting paprika kind of flavor going on in the mid palate. Transition into like, 
you know, pom have you ever had pomegranate where you've actually eaten the insides, not just the little seeds, it's very sour and bitter. Um, I used to get frustrated on like picking the pomegranates and finally just blah, blah, and bite it with the like skin or the inner layers of it. Um, kind of has that flavor going on in a big way because there is some bitterness kind of coming along with the fruit. Interesting cherry cola kind of thing. Mm, the finish is tough. Wow, out of every tasting note I've ever given, which is in the thousands now on the Thunder Show, biting the middle of a pomegranate because you get all the insides as well is probably the most on point characteristic of a wine that I've ever come across. This tastes exactly like it, guys. Uh, interesting. Um, gonna be a little too bitter, bitter for some people. I can deal with it. The alcohol in the finish is a little bit hot for me. Uh, I'm gonna go 88 points on this wine and at 24 bones, I'm gonna give it a pass. I think Parker scored a little high, uh, but everybody has their own palate. You have yours, you should trust yours, and maybe with a little bit more breathing or decanting or with food, this wine wraps around it because it's a little hot on its own merit. Um, let's move on. Before we do, I have a pretty cool thing that I wanna share with you. Over the weekend, I was able to get the book. Uh, so this is the first copy, and this one's going to my parents. But I'm gonna be doing some really cool stuff uh, with the book, and so it's really cool. I mean, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Uh, you know, it's really cool how it goes from like number wine number, you know, 101 down to. Uh, I like how it says this is not a wine guy. You like that one? Um, you know, really cool little cool recap at the end. Um, we're gonna do a really cool contest. Uh, I know a lot of you bought two copies and emailed in. Uh, to uh, the book at Wine Library address. We got hundreds and hundreds of receipts there. Thank you so much for supporting the book. I'm sure you might have saw, we reached 36 on Amazon globally. Ma, that is incredible, crazy awesome. Thank you so much. Now we're in the 400s. I wanna get back in the top 100. So we gotta come up with some ideas. I need your help, Vayner Nation. Let's do question of the day. Let's do it right off the bat. Well, I, because I, I kind of need you, and this is a chance for a lot of you to come out of the woodworks. A lot of lurkers, a lot of people who haven't commented in a while. You know, different thoughts, different ideas. What should I do to help get the book more viral and more exciting and into more hands? What kind of contest, ideas, marketing plans? What can we do to get back into the Amazon Top 100? That is the question of the day. Let's see what kind of savvy marketing PR idea people we have in the Vayner Nation. But. Um, I definitely will be doing uh, uh, the first copy besides my parents' copy, sign it, and we're gonna do a little contest on Wine Library TV. Again, to be eligible for all the different giveaways. By the way, every single person that bought two copies is getting something in the next couple weeks. Um, so if you buy two copies, send in the receipt. If you only bought one, you wanna buy another one, send in the receipts, we'll figure it out. Uh, to the let's, Ma, let's link up the book page that we created uh, for the 101 thing that has the book at Wine Library Dime email. Really cool, thank you so much. I can't believe how many of you really came out and supported it. Father's Day, Mother's Day, I think we're gonna be able to play that gift angle. I'm, I'm curious to see what the Vayner Nation comes through with. Uh, but Vaniacs, I appreciate it. Um, the book's pretty cool. The book is really, really cool. Free t-shirt for anybody who knows what this wine is. Boom. I don't know, that's it. I'm just saying. All right, let's move on. I mean, can you believe it? Like, touching it in real life is crazy. You want to touch it, huh? It's wild. Nyers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with you here. Nyers, High Valley Vineyards, 2005 Zinfandel. 24 US dollars, 91 points, Robert Parker. A uh, very good winery, Nyers. Uh, 15 2 out. Let's give it a rinse first. Come on, how many copies did you buy? Because remember, you ruined my floor. 50. 50, good, all right. Oh man, the stand didn't come out, did it? We got some good tips. Yeah, I saw that. We're gonna have to use some of them. Did you zoom in on this? Yes. All right. Got it. So, are we on 450? What episode is this? This is 450, 448. We're getting close to 450, halfway home to 500. This is, I figured it out the other day, this is season 17. Season 17. <laughs> and a half, and a half SNL, Simpsons, you're dead. Sniffy sniff. Wow. All right, we're having a little fun, but now it's time to get serious because this wine brought some serious. Now this is really interesting. I get a very interesting forest floor component, and that's like sod and pine cones and pine leaves and leaves and a little bit animal and animal residue and snails and worms, very earth floor. Tons of black pepper. 
I love tons of black pepper. This wine has tons of black pepper, so that's a good sign. Gorgeous, beautiful, fresh picked strawberries coming through on the nose. I get a little Kirsch Royale as well. There's a big nose, and I'll be honest with you, I could sit here and smell this wine for hours. I love this, Mom, check this out. My watch is on backwards today. It's pretty cool. I wonder what that means. Let's give it a whirl. Fascinating. 15-2, no heat on the finish. This is where the purity of fruit really comes through. Just, wow, silky, my friends. I mean, this is really good Zinfandel. You know what I love about this? Even though it's a monster, it's not over the top like some of the Turley and Martinelli Zinfandels get. Any of you Zin fans for the last decade, you know what I'm talking about, where it gets port-like. This still tastes like wine, but it's got intense little cranberry flavors. I get beautiful dark cease sea flavors rounded out with great pepper and strawberries. I mean, just a gorgeous mouthfeel. Silkiness. I mean, like drinking pure water almost, but you actually taste something. The other thing I like about this wine, it's meaty. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean by meaty. When I was swirling in my mouth, I actually had a natural reaction to bite on it. It's got density, structure, and complexity. I mean, it feels like food. I wanna eat it. I wanna eat this wine. And that, to me, is always a sign of a very full-bodied, complex, intense, spectacular effort. Kudos, Nyers killed it. Almost like a sour patch kind of flavor on the finish. Mm, pretty, I like this. I'm gonna score this wine, I'm gonna score this wine 93 points. Yes I am. Uh, I think it is a very exceptional effort. I'm gonna two up Parker, 91 points from him. Uh, I think for 24 Bones, if you want to get into Zinfandel, if you want to see what really balanced, complex, and complete BCC, as we like to call it, Zinfandel tastes like, this is your effort. Don't get caught up in some of the really crazy big names like Turley and Martinelli, though are very good and are fun. I just think, and you know what I like about this? Bordeaux fans, you know, people that like a little more structure, even though it's New World Fruit, I think the balance of this wine is what's kind of really catching me off guard and really propelling it to that 93 point stratosphere which is high for me and for anybody. And so, it's really darn good. I'm just gonna drink it. Just such a habit, I try to drink it. It's good. The strawberry is really good. A little fun dip, you know the fun dip powder? Nice, let's move on. Ridge, Linton Springs, 2005. Always a huge favorite of many, many different people. 29 US dollars, uh, 88 points wine spectator. Very low for Linton Springs uh, through the last kind of decade. 77% Zinfandel, 17% Petit Syrah. Remember, Petit Syrah, even though it says Petit, usually bigger and more bold than standard Syrah. A little fun fact for the kids. 6% Carignan. 14.4% alcohol, and let's see what's going on. What else is cooking, Mott? Nothing good? Mm -hmm. UFC, big boxing fight this weekend. Last weekend, it was really good. Bernard Hopkins liked that. It was a good fight. Joe Kawasaki, still undefeated, big time fighter. Great color, nice little color. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Aromatically the weakest of the bunch, the least appealing on the nose. It smells a little garbagey. Um, and I'm talking like New York City garbage. Like, if you're like me, sometimes you get stuck directly behind the garbage truck on your way to work. This is what it has. A little rotten kind of feeling. A little grainy, kind of like mushed, like 
one day old grain cereal too, if that kind of makes sense, if you let it, you know, kind of mushy. Not super appealing. I get a little bit of like an oyster shell now kind of component. Or like the middle of an oyster. I don't know, not my favorite. I'm very awkward, very interesting, different kind of nose. Let's give it a whirl. A little bit lighter than most of the uh, Zinfandels or the Linton Springs that I remember from Ridge in the past. Yeah, kind of light, um, which is a problem for me. A little bit bland, a little bit boring. Um, I get some dark cherry flavors. Um, it's kind of nice, it's silky, it's simple. Wow. You know, we always talk about wines that are rated higher and then we rate them lower. It's always fun to rate them higher. I thought this was gonna be on paper. I've always been traditionally a pretty big Linton Springs fan, but I have to agree with the Wine Spectator. I think they knocked it out of the park on this one. I think this is not as good of effort as I've had in the past. I get some really, you know, like when you buy blueberries and they're not that good, you know, like you just pick the wrong batch. That's what this tastes like, a bad batch of blueberries. B cubed, my friends. I'm going 85 points. I'm gonna get a major pass. I think you can buy a Zinfandel type like wine like this for 13 bucks all day long. See, I didn't even say bones. That's how pissed off I am. Tough. What else? Nothing. Just, you know, good to be back. I'm here the whole week, Mott. So we're gonna kick out some really good shows. Um, I really wanna get a crap load of comments. So here's what we're gonna do. Not only do I want you to answer the question of the day in one section, come back at me with what would you like to see us do this week? I wanna get some ideas of where the Vayner Nation wants me to go because I will navigate to your heart and soul and deliver some of the best content on the internet that happens to be about the Vino. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. And maybe the book world, if we can get some good ideas. Whether they like it or not. Mont, don't go anywhere. One last thing. Thank you so much for letting me do this.